how do you really tell the difference between a good listing agent, uh, maybe compared to like an average or a not even very average listing agent? Yeah, so there there's a really wide range of real estate agents and how good they are. Mm -hmm. um, what you know, real estate is an industry where it's one of the few industries where you've got. And welcome to the studio, realty expert John Brody, and that's worth an applause. Hey, hey. How you doing on this wonderful Friday? Good, yeah. Got big plans for the weekend? Um, I've got a buyer in town this weekend, so I'm going to be showing a whole bunch of houses. But, oh. Um, yeah, so. So yeah. Some, oh, I imagine you guys do work quite a bit on weekends, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially for, you know, when you got an out-of-town buyer sure. um, coming to town. you got to kind of cater yeah, to them. A good one, so. Yeah, yeah, they can't just come, like, call them up and say, hey, I got a house for you to look at. Uh, okay, I'll be right there. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, I I've... I'm starting to figure this out, but we need to hear it from an expert. How do you really tell the difference between a good listing agent, uh, maybe compared to like an average or a not even very average listing agent? Yeah, so there there's a really wide range of real estate agents and how good they are. Mm -hmm. um, what you know, real estate is an industry where it's one of the few industries where you've got the majority of the people who are licensed. It's not their full time profession. Sure. So this is. Um, and you know, people, if, if somebody had a bad experience with a real estate agent, there's a pretty good chance that, or somebody just delivered very, really average service. And mm -hmm. you hear them talking about, oh, I could have just done all that myself. It's probably because they worked with somebody who barely knows more than your average homeowner about real estate. Okay. Um, you know, two thirds of agents are part-time agents mm -hmm. Grand, that are out of the licensed agents in Grand Forks. Um, so. Every agent can make big promises. Every agent can promise the latest marketing techniques and the flashy stuff and the bells and whistles. Um, and you know, being up to date on that stuff is good. You definitely don't want to get behind on that stuff because that's that's definitely a slippery slope. Sure. But the fundamentals of being a real estate agent still matter. And the most the easiest way to be able to tell how good of a real estate agent you're talking to is ask them for their track record. The track record's not going to lie. You want to see um, how how well their uh, statistics compare um, over the you know maybe like for example, I always show every seller that I meet with um, the last five years of my track record mm -hmm. of selling homes um, on the listing side because that's what they're interviewing me for. I mean, it's almost like interviewing a potential employee yep. uh, because that is really what you are. Yep. If you could promise all the latest <coughs> stuff that sounds awesome, make big promises, do all this high tech latest stuff that we all do. Um, but if you don't have the fundamentals down and your track record is bad, it probably means you're you're missing some of those important, um, you know, basics mm -hmm. of being a really good real estate agent. Um, so when you're talking about statistics, what do I, what do I mean by that? Okay. You want to look at, um, the original list to sale price ratio. You want to be looking at the list to sale price ratio. You want to be looking at their average days on market. You want to be looking at their average price per square foot closed. And then the percentage of the listings that they take that never sell. There are, you know, there's on, in the past 12 months, 23, uh, or 22%, um, of all the listings that hit the market mm -hmm. end up canceling, withdrawing or expiring. Oh, and that's even in wow. the past year, which has been a very hot market. Yeah. So there are listings that fail to sell and it's usually due to mistakes made by the listing agent. Okay. You know, sometimes it, the house is the problem, but um, there's a lot of uh, easy things that an, if a good agent can do to make the house more marketable and you know, improper pricing is another killer. So when we go through those statistics, what is the original list to sale price ratio? That's the average percentage you get of your original full asking price. Okay. So uh, if, if we list it for a hundred grand, and we drop the price, it doesn't sell in the first 30 days, we drop the price to 95 grand, we get an offer at 88, and we end up eventually sell settling at 90,000. Okay. Um, that's a 90% original list to sale price ratio, sure. which is not good, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that measures how well you negotiate, how accurately you price the property right off the bat, how well you marketed it, how well you staged it. It's probably the most important statistic out of all of these. Um, Next up, you've got the list to sale price ratio. List to sale price ratio only measures how well you are doing in negotiations. So after we price reduced it to $95,000 and we eventually sold it for $90,000, it measures that distance between what it was listed at at the time of the offer versus what it eventually sold for. 
Does that make sense? Yep. 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 Um, average days on market is huge as well because we know that the longer a home sits on the market, the lower it's going to sell at, the lower right. price per square foot it's going to sell at, the worse off you're going to be in negotiations. Um, so having a low average days on market is a sign of success. Um, and then price per square foot sold. So one of the ways somebody could get these numbers really good, original list to sale price ratio, list to sale price ratio and days on market is if they were underpricing properties and not listing them and selling them for what they're really worth. Um, so you want to make sure that the agent's not just building up their numbers by underpricing properties. Sure. You want to make sure the average, it's not just the average sale price, it's the average price per square foot sold is better than the average uh, in Grand Forks. And then the percentage of listings that don't sell, that's how, how often do you fail as a listing agent where the listing fails to sell. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you want to have something to compare these numbers to. So you would want to find out what the average is in Grand Forks or wherever you're selling your home. And then you'd want to look at that agent's average in Grand Forks. So for example, like myself comparing myself to the average in Grand Forks, um, the original list to sale price ratio since, and here's another thing you want to notice. Um, in the past two years, the market's been very hot. Mm -hmm. So a lot of agents look really good sure. when the market's hot. Um, those same agents maybe didn't look so good back, you know, 2017 through mm -hmm. 2019 when the market was kind of stagnant. Um, so I'm showing all my statistics all the way back to 2017, um, last five years. So the original list to sale price ratio in Grand Forks, the average is 96.3%. My average original list to sale price ratio is 98.98%. Wow. So that's a lot more money that my sellers are getting closer mm -hmm. to their full asking right. price than the average agent. Um, the list to sale price ratio in Grand Forks on average since 1-1 uh, of 2017 is 98.11%. My average is 99.69%. So we're doing um, you know, almost 1.5% better than the average just in negotiations. Right. Um, so, and then the other thing we want to look at, like we mentioned, is the days on market. And this is from listing until closing. Okay. So this includes the contract close period all the way back to 2017. The average days on market from listing to closing in Grand Forks is 122 days. My average days on market from listing to closing is only 64 days. Wow, that's Almost less than half. half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so think about the holding costs associated with sitting on the market for twice as long. You're saving money on that side of things too, and you're preserving your negotiating leverage. Um, when homes sit on the market for longer, they become more stigmatized. Uh, you lose consumer confidence in the mm -hmm. product. So. Then we go to price per square foot sold to show that these numbers are not just pumped up by me underpricing properties. The average price per square foot sold since 2017 in Ground Forks is $106.36 per foot. Okay. Um, my average price per square foot sold in Ground Forks, is, and this this both of these are on existing construction. We're not comparing to new construction. Okay, okay. Because um, that's going to be a higher price per square foot. Mine is 107.95, so it's a dollar and 30 cents roughly mm -hmm. higher per square foot um, which adds up a lot that adds up a lot on a 2000 square foot house. sure does yeah. yeah um and then the percentage of listings that don't sell and this is in the past year so this is where the number that's the average in grand forks is going to be the lowest probably out of the last five years uh 22.3 percent of listings in grand forks on average that go on the market don't sell um i haven't had a single listing in the past 12 months that's gone on the market and failed to sell wow so when you're interviewing an agent, don't get blown away by all the bells and whistles and fancy technology yeah. if they don't have the basics to like back it. Right. Up. They could say, well, you know, I sold 25 houses last year, but you want to see those numbers. Yeah. Because yeah, they could all be underpriced. They're, you know, like you said, sugarcoat and everything uh, just to make themselves look better. You need to dig into this a little bit more. And <clears throat> that's why it's important to... Um, you know, if you're going to interview a realty expert, go through a few of them. Yep. You know, pick the ones you want. But um, I can pretty much guarantee you if they interview somebody from Berkshire Hathaway and then interview guys from uh, other, you know, realty places, they're probably going to pick you guys uh, yeah. because of things like this. And this is different even from agent to agent within an office, too. Like, you, you are hiring the agent and mm -hmm. the agent's personal brand even more than you're hiring the uh, name of the company on the sign. Sure. So make sure that agent has what it takes within the company because every company has good agents, every company has bad agents. Right. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's you know, this, this is thousands and thousands of dollars. For example, like in this scenario, um, it's, it's 
that we'll run through the scenario. If somebody lists with the average agent in Grand Forks, let's say they have a $240,000 original listing price, um, they've price reduced to about $235,300 uh, by the time they get the offer, and they end up negotiating down to about $231,120 uh, um, by the time they sell, plus they had an additional two months of holding costs. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. If they list with me at 240 on average, they rarely have had to price reduce. They were down at 239 238 on average which isn't even a full price reduction. So, no. Um, and then 237, uh, 552 sale price. So 231, 120 versus 237, 552. That's just on average, my sellers are netting $8,000 more than if they would have list, listed with the average agent in Grand Forks. You know, um, I'm crappy at math, John, but um, that's pretty much a no brainer. Um, all these figures and numbers that, that, that you have told us and, um, you know, that's just a few of the things, how you can spot the difference between a good listing agent and maybe an average one. Yep. Um, but you also got to, you know, go out and talk to them, um, interview them. And, and um, when you start showing stuff like this, I mean, it's a no brainer. Yep. And just because somebody is the top producer in town doesn't mean their uh, track record is going to be better than the average. Mm -hmm. You know, the number of homes somebody sells per year, obviously you want somebody with enough experience where they're seeing transactions on sure. a you know, weekly and monthly basis where they're experienced enough and have their finger on the pulse of the market. Um, but, you know, as long as it's a full-time agent, don't just automatically think that the top producer is going to be the actual better agent at doing the duties of being a listing agent. Right. I mean, because uh, the part-time agents, you know, if they've got a full-time job elsewhere and, and like for the example you gave, having to show a house this weekend because the people are from out of town, um, you got to get calls like that. And you got to, you know, you can't just drop everything you're doing and say, Hey, I'll, I'll meet you over there right now. Um, that can't be done uh, if you're at a different job. Yep. And if, and, I'm working in real estate from eight to five, you know, every day of the week, working on this stuff, staying on top of the market, um, working with clients, working through issues like that's that's, you know, 10 times the amount of time that a part time agent mm -hmm. is putting into it if they have a different job. And, you know, between all of you uh, realty experts at Berkshire Hathaway, I don't know a single one of you that only works eight to five Monday through Friday. Yeah. Uh, you guys are basically on call 24 seven. Um, I know you guys answer your calls as soon as you can and, and you get back to these people, but huge difference, yep. uh, you know, not just little subtle differences uh, between a good agent and a, and a mediocre one. Yeah, it's one of the, I mean, you know, $150 an hour lawyer compared to a $450 an hour lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be some difference there, but I think real estate, the worst agents in a market compared to the best you know, most knowledgeable, most experienced agents in a the market. There's just such a world of difference. It's probably even more dramatic than any similar industry. Right. Wow. Uh, again, I learned something. Yeah. Uh, I'm learning stuff from you guys Good. all the time. I mean, I thought I learned a lot on Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, boy, you, you got me uh, thinking about a lot of things going into the weekend. Good. Good. If uh, somebody wants to get a hold of a good listing agent, a realty expert, John Brodeen, how do they do that, John? So like you said, with learning, if you want to learn more, follow me on Instagram and YouTube. And if you want to become a client, reach out to me on my cell phone, call or text me 701-213-5428. All right, John, have yourself a great weekend, man. Yeah, you too, John. And uh, probably won't see you for a couple of weeks, but yeah, um, I'll be back. All right. Take care, my friend. Yeah, you too. All right. There we go. Your Berkshire Hathaway biweekly podcast, Friday edition in the books. Realty expert John Brodeen, always um, enhancing my knowledge about real estate every time they're in here. Uh, have yourself a great weekend, everybody. And we'll be back with another Berkshire Hathaway biweekly podcast. Yeah.